And what else is different and interesting about this deck? Oh, uh, yes, he's maining two anti spell fragrance. Yeah, we have a sign. Yes. But it looks like he's got just lots of good traps. Huh? Only two Solemn Strike in the main. Uh, I think Zach. With 14 traps. Fire. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much all I see right now. So, in, in, when looking at the side deck and kind of giving you an insight as to what's going to come up in this matchup, um, we see obviously three Max C from Zach. Also have Mystical Space Typhoon, which is probably going to be the only card he brings in. Um, if I were him, as I would just bring in a Max C and um, <laughs> Mystical Space Typhoon. And as far as dropping cards, uh, potentially dropping anti spell fragments, um, obviously there's two in the main deck. Those are going to come out. Possibly even a card like Solemn Warning doesn't really get a whole lot of value from milling, so definitely see him cutting strikes, warning, spell fragrances for Maxis and MSTs. And then on Eden's side, as we get set to begin this pivotal game one of our final four, uh, I would expect him to bring in possibly Vanity Fiend going first and uh, system down either way. And that's about it. Uh, potentially full house, but probably not. So it, it's going to be a grind here, folks. And looking at what they can side, it's not a whole lot of cards. Uh, so what you see is what you get. And they shake hands, and we are underway. Final four. ARG St. Louis. Yu-Gi-Oh. What's it to you? We have two players that are very well established on the circuit. And here comes a Cosmo Town shuffling back a forerunner to give us our first look at Zach's hand. Zachary's probably trying to dig for that duality or that card of demise to give him his options. And again, the storylines could not be any better. We have Patrick Hoban trying to become, to again just establish his dominance in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh with yet another championship. We have Zachary Leverett, who has faded in and out of competition over the years as far as winning and and uh, being a champion himself. As you see, Tin Can come to the field and resolve here. Um, we also have Eden, the local hero, playing PK Fire, who the hopes and dreams of many in the Missouri area now rest on his shoulders. And then we have our fourth player that we haven't had a whole lot of time to talk about, uh, which is Eddie North, I believe, who won the other, uh, who's kind of waiting in the wings for Patrick's top eight match to finish. Um, Carlos Madrano is here as well, and he's an established player from Texas. So lots of storylines, and we'll see what happens here as a uh, Tin Can is going off and going to be grabbing probably Dark Destroyer, Dark Lady, Slip Rider. What would you go for here? Is, uh, I guess Dark, Dark Destroyer, obviously. What else? I mean, with Call of the Haunted, you want cards that are going to net you a lot of advantage. So, so, so Dark, Dark, Dark Lady is pretty strong. Uh, Why the Forerunner, do you think? Just because it's huge. It's big. And it, whenever it gets in the game, you know, it, I mean, it's it, big. he has nothing in his... Um, well, he'd have to go straight into uh, Beatrice to Crash, maybe. It would take 300 and pull out a Pilgrim. Yeah, 20 is huge in this matchup, so I do like that. Uh, and it doesn't it target. And it doesn't target, Which so... Which also very powerful. So already, Zach off to a great start, if you're a fan of the Leverett household, and the Cosmo of Demise deck. Eden Salins. Uh, facing down another great turn one from his opponent yet again. We saw last time he was able to overcome it. And he does main deck Twin Twister, and so he certainly can do so. I'm curious uh, what he's drawn to uh, combat this field. He plays three Twin Twisters, so that's always a good start. He yeah. does have a Takam Tomborg in his hand, so already a, a minus. But yeah, and the Bar Bar, which is. And not agree a very with the Blue good. Bomber in the stream that he's got a whole heck of a lot of monsters in hand, and he's going to need all of them to uh, apply pressure to this back row of Mr. Leverett. This should be fun. Again, Final four, Eden Salins, Zachary Leverett, your host, Tipo Pro, alongside my esteemed partner, Jeffrey Michael Percher, a.k.a. the Dougie Master, bringing you live commentary and coverage uh, to this ARG St. Louis event. This is our uh, final cut. Four players remain. Only one can bring home the title of ARG St. Louis champion. Is it going to be Eden Salins, the local hero? Will it be Zachary Leverett, the established player? Will it be Patrick Hoban, uh, adding on to the laundry list of accomplishments that he's made in this game? Or is it someone else? We will find out uh, quite shortly here. And Adante hits the board. And again, continue to reach out to your friends, family, ex-girlfriends, ex-boyfriends, 
uh, your neighbor's dog, whoever you want, to come and watch the stream. Get it's, on that uh, stream. ARG Twitch, Twitch ARG Live. We would love to have you guys uh, continue to increase the readership and the uh, the viewers. And ouch, we have a terror top hitting the grave, and there's a tour guide. So this is probably going to be negated here. Unless Zachary didn't draw anything. I guess he's just waiting for whatever he summons. Because he can just cast Trap the Dante. It's actually more value than negating a car like Tour Guide. And so that's, again, a little more player preference. But really, it's an optimal line of play that if you know he's going into something that you can banish instead of uh, negating these monsters, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Now, obviously, he's going to get Sir, though. But I think he's realized that from a consistency standpoint, maybe better to get rid of the extra deck mon uh, stuff. And so Eddie North did, did lose, I believe. He could... Uh you could banish to bring down the Dark Destroyer now and target the third. So if, if Eddie lost, that means Michael Campos would have actually won that matchup. And so another, I apologize if, if we had uh, got some incorrect information. So it may be that Michael Campos is awaiting the winner of Patrick Hoban and Carlos Medrano. Yes, your neighbor's hot sister is also available uh, to watch the stream. I'd encourage you to reach out to her. It's always a good idea, as long as she's of appropriate age, of course. Not condoning any of that behavior here on the stream. Uh, but back to the match, and back to a Final Four, where we have a, well, PK Fire deck against a Cosmo Demise deck. Both players um, so far off to the races, and we've got a graph, especially from the hand. So important to note that, should this somehow be negated, that uh, that graph's not going to get any value. Three Dante already for Mr. Salins. He is going in. And Zach is content to let all this go through, and I don't know... I, if any of those traps are real at this point, uh, I they may all be calls of the haunt. It they, doesn't make any they sense. They might be. But uh, I think maybe what Zachary is worried about is an F0. The card is so powerful in this matchup. And he knows that really he can he can combat any of these Dantes. It's really the F0 that's, that's going to um, really be something to worry about. And we, we heard from Sanders that last round, that's exactly what he did. He played right into that F0, which then got cast trappled after all of these resources have been um, mismanaged, I guess you could say. And so maybe Zach's playing the long game here. And welcome back, Glasgow. It's glad to have you in the chat. Uh, appreciate your feedback yesterday. Want to give you a shout out as well. Encourage you to check out his channel as well for a viewership. As always, a great uh, partner to ARG. And uh, appreciate you joining us on the stream and uh, increasing the watchers. Let's go ahead and get up over a thousand here at your ARG St. Louis Final Four. It's Tipo Pro and uh, Jeffrey Master. Michael Percher, aka the Dougie Master. Yeah, speaking of Dougie Master, he's a real person. He's great. So here's a Levier. I mean, he is just going in. He's just, there's no response from Zach at all. And this is really kind of amazing, <laughs> this field. And I don't know if Zach is playing with a Drowning Mirror for it. I don't, let's look at that list. Does he have one? No, he's got, so, okay. Just to give you some perspective, it's possible that he drew Anti-Spell Fragrance and a card like Solemn Warning. Um, but I think it would have Solemn the, the tour guide. So I'm going to say he's got maybe a Call the Haunted, or an oasis. Nope. Oh, there there, was. Okay, so there, there it is. Was. He really did wait for the uh, the F zero. So we're gonna update the life points. So Zach's now at six thousand. But wow, so he really did wait for the long game. So and and you know Eden had to have talked to Sanders in between the rounds. He just came off of this. Just had the same thing happen. So and he's gonna add back here. He's still got the Tuckum Tomborg in his hand, which he can special summon to the field because he does have a wind monster with Levier if he uh -oh. wants to wall up and I make a rank three. And he's got that. I'm curious if he sees that. That'd be interesting to see if he goes ahead and specials the Tuckum Tomborg and makes another rank three here. He's got the option. I hope that he recognizes it. And Zach is Oh he he does see it. At fifty five. Right. Thank you again as we missed the uh, the tin can, but he does catch the Takum Tom Borg and so he's gonna get some value out of that. And so uh, again, great to see a brick card unbrick <laughs> in the context of, of Yu Gi Oh there and uh, so far this has been everything we've anticipated so far. Is this gonna come down and snipe a couple more back rows and Zach being so patient, that's really been key in this matchup and there's a grand pulse hitting the field and uh, wow, this match has had it all early on. Who's got the upper hand? We got patience versus just an all-out attacks from, from Eden. This is great stuff. Yeah, I, I've never seen B.A. run out of steam, but I've never seen B.A. go in like Eden over here. There's, like, no fear here. The guy is ready. Yeah, and Zach's just content to let everything hit the board and just kind of react to it. And 
man, that this is this is a great match, and he's just kind of thinking it through. You see him kind of pointing to some different things, and making some hand motions. He's trying to figure out what else uh, Eden can throw at him. So far, he's thrown everything but the kitchen sink in this uh, first turn. Yeah, it's great because he's uh, he's only lost one card out of all of these plays. He's uh, he still got five cards in advantage. Three on the field, two in hand. And there goes a Grand Pulse, and there goes a Solemn uh, oh, there uh, Oasis, go. Oasis of Dragon Souls. So that grabbed him a Dark Destroyer, uh, which is then you grabbed or, uh, a Forerunner. Sorry, Forerunner, excuse me, so which grabbed Slip, go slip combo off again. to the Cosmo. So, you know, really, Eden, you can't fault him, but he played kind of right into Zach's hand here. Yeah. Uh, and that's Cosmo patient. Demise for you, very patient. And, and that's where I think he separates himself for a lot of new players to the deck of Cosmo as well as to the, to the, the game. And uh, Zach's uh, a huge fan of the GOAT control format, and that teaches you a lot of patience and holding onto the cards until you absolutely have to activate them. We're seeing that on full display here. He could have activated that from the beginning, stopped the Dantes, who could have activated Cast Chapel and Tour Guide, decides not to do so, and now we're seeing what separates uh, kind of that upper echelon of players, if you will. Yep. And so, uh, here he's going to grab second slip. F zero. Here comes uh, second F zero, and that's why he plays two for this very matchup. And Eden. Eden's going for what he thinks is the win condition. Yeah, he's really going for the win condition here. And folks, if you're just joining us, this is the final four. And this is game one. the final four of ARG St. Louis, game one. Zach Leverett versus Eden Salins. So it looks like Zach grabbed a second Dark Destroyer. Look at that look of intense concentration on Zach's face. I think he's he's baffled by the second F zero. Well, I don't know if he's anticipated facing more than one. And they're building the chain links now. And we are updating the life points. It'll take just a moment here. And again, we've updated the title, so apologize for that. And uh, here's Dante here. And he can certainly use that. Uh, he, he can't use graph here. Um, I don't think he's used a graph yet. Well, he specialed the graph from his hand, so he can't use... Oh, did he? Yeah, so he can't use graph this turn. It's all right, he can wait next turn. But do uh, do need to get an update on the life points, because uh, I believe there was an attack over the tin can, potentially. Um, no, 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 Zachary he had banished it, it to special so the Dark Destroyer. I don't know if we have any damage yet. Uh, anyone wants to... Um, if anyone still wants to update this on the uh, life points, I'd appreciate it as well. Momentarily distracted as we updated the title that you're seeing below. Uh, again, we're live. Tipo Pro, Jeffrey Michael Percher, a.k.a. the Dougie Master, bringing you... This is game number one of a absolute slugfest between Zachary Leverett and Eden Salins, playing Cosmo of Demise and PK Fire, respectively. It's, it's literally been a game of who can put the best cards on the board and when and when and it's it's really hard because the best part about cosmo is the dark destroyer and the slip rider and the dark lady they're all really good cards mm -hmm. yep but um, v8 float yeah but he's down to his his last of zero and if he can out it i just that's the question can he out it but i think that um honestly, i still think zachary has the upper hand yeah honestly what i think um zach's play is is to make the pleiades Appreciate all the watchers in the chat. Continue to come on in, join us in the chat, pose any questions or comments that you have. Love to keep up the enthusiasm and the engagement here at ARG Live. Oh, and, and 
and here comes the Dark Lady on the end phase, and then he draws for turn. Okay, here we go, guys. Looking at Zach's deck, he may have drawn a duality, some sort of ultimate rare card. I don't know what it was. Let's see if he can show that. Maybe it's a Dark Destroyer and a trap. Is it a solemn warning or is it a cosmo? I think it may be warning if it's uh, ultimate. Okay, he's got that fog blade. Which he cannot use other than to protect his own monster. I think it's stop Dark Lady. I think you want to go for infinity and just suck up the F Zero. I think that's the play. He could do that. Um, he would he could slam down his Dark Destroyer and pop itself to pull out his second slip rider. Pop, try yep. to pop that back row, bait it out, and then make it make it still infinity. so much up for grabs here in the final four. Uh, Patrick Hoban and Carlos Madrano are wrapping up their top eight match. So that match can, was still going on. And that's Monarch Mirror matches for you. When you don't have a time limit, that's what happens. I, I really think Zach's going to try to negate. So I don't know if uh, it almost looks like Carlos won and that. Patrick's heading out. We have to get an update here. And we believe Carlos Madrano has taken taken out Patrick Hoban here in our uh, as we head into the top four. So Carlos will then play against Michael Campos. So storyline. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. Oh, so we have an okay, update. Okay, so it's still going uh, on. We have an update that actually, no, Patrick Hoban was not leaving the building. In yeah. fact, he was heading to the restroom because they're still deadlocked at a game apiece as Patrick has won game two. And game two had taken about 40 minutes by itself. And so if you're just joining us, this whole uh, <laughs> top eight match is still being completed while Eden and Zachary determine who's going to meet in the finals. Um, and so Patrick Hoban taking a quick back bathroom break um, while Carlos rests as well as they are in a Monarch rear match. And, and maybe that's the disadvantage of not having time is that this could go on for a day and a half. And uh, meanwhile, back at the action, we have two Slip Riders and a Dark Destroyer. We have a potential... That, that Fog Blade's uh, been taken out. The Fog Blade's been taken out. Here comes an Infinity, I would imagine, sucking up the F-Zero. And I just I don't see how Zachary Slurp. loses this game. He's just he's he's destroyed every extra deck monster that Eden can play. I think he's running out of resources. You've got Zachary with the upper hand. I just think that it's it's over. And that fog blade right there. Someone asked, is Road of the King good? Is it uh, worth buying? I encourage you to find out for yourself. Go ahead and pick it up at ARG.com. You can order it today on ARG.com. Your source of everything Yu-Gi-Oh. And no, I'm not being paid to advertise. I just decided to work that in. So, kudos. <laughs> and we're here live courtside. ARG St. Louis, Final Four. It's Tipo Pro and uh, Jeffrey Michael Percher, a.k.a. The Dougie, Dougie Master. Dougie Master. And so we are live still. Game number one. Uh, still not a whole lot of damage being done here as it's uh, 5,500 life points to 8,000. Eden and Zachary vying for the top spot. It, it is. And so uh, Patrick Hoban is still battling with Carlos Medrano, and he has returned to his seat, and they will continue to play uh, their matchup as well. And so um, we're going here, just turn down a little bit of the volume here, and I'm being now joined. And folks, we have welcome to the booth now. We have Mr. Jonathan Nagel. Johnny, welcome again to the stream. We're live here in game number one of our final four matchup in ARG St. Louis. Zach Leverett, Cosmo Demise with a, a huge Cyber Dragon Infinity against Eden Salins. Uh, who's your pick to move on to the finals? 
Um, what's up, guys? Yeah, it's Johnny over here at the ARG St. Louis. Uh, my pick's going to go with Zach. I'm a good friend of Zach, and I, I hope he prevails here. So, so we're thinking Zach with Cosmo Demise. Seems to have the upper hand in game number one. Uh, so take me through. Uh, obviously, you competed in the tournament yesterday as well. Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts on the level of competition, the players that came out, uh, the meta as it evolves? Share uh, some thoughts with that. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, ARGs are uh, definitely a good time. You see a lot of familiar faces, uh, a lot, a lot of top tier players, um, and decks. I saw some uh, cool new strategies actually. Uh, Jake Feeney had a. Uh, a really cool deck. He um, mm -hmm. with the back check. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, he beat me uh, day one. I actually made a deck list error for getting some extra deck cards and oh got a no. game loss. <laughs> uh, dragged it to game three, but um, he 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 was able to beat me. But I really liked his uh, his version of the deck. It was pretty cool. Just something new. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah. Well, you, you mentioned uh, the deck list error, and not to not to call you out on. Oh that, no, definitely, definitely. But it happens more often than I would think, especially from from players that have been around this for a long time. What do you think contributes to that? Uh, and maybe you can share a perspective of being in the game for so long. If it's just something that's uh, whether it's laziness or it's, it's just because you play so much, you start to kind of use jargon and slang on some of the card names, and that messes it up. Or what contributes yeah. to that? Because it seems to happen to everybody. Um, yeah, definitely. You know, it's it's something so minor. You know, it's it's things because it's not really part of the game play but mm -hmm. it definitely is yep. is necessarily part of the game you have to have a deck list um, it, for me yesterday I was just running a little late I was a little tired um, just forgot to fill in some some uh, quantities of cards and was uh, penalized but uh, I yeah definitely uh, I, for some advice I'd just say yeah make sure you're just well prepared uh, usually I have a, a friend actually just take a look at the deck list and make sure okay. there's no errors um, I haven't made a mistake like that in a long time a long because time. <laughs> I was punished pretty hard when I was younger a younger guy younger duelist out there and so um, cool. usually I have a friend check it but that's just my advice on it so nationals is coming up we're, we're kind of in the heart of that format are, are you planning on going oh yeah definitely definitely okay. nationals is one of my favorite times of the year you get to see uh, old faces new faces um, it's a big event it's a great weekend mm -hmm. uh, it's been in Pittsburgh before uh, I like Pittsburgh it's a nice city uh, black and yellow black and yellow you see all the gold and um, yep. black bridges out there um, but well, uh, we had good talked time. earlier on the stream about nationals and how um, it seems to have a different feel this year because you have really for the first time in Yu-Gi-Oh a lot more interaction on either player's turn more than we may have ever seen before we also have some mirror matches specifically the Monarch one that comes to mind that um, I really see uh, maybe a potential advantage or disadvantage depending on how you really have to grind that out and how much time that really takes to play out and how in the constraints of a national setting with the timing and the grind that you have to win 12, 13, 14 matches. What that deck gives you the best chance and, and how do you prepare for that mentally? You mentioned the exhaustion, even when you first arrive. It's, it seems really hard to play Monarch in Nationals, but it may be the best deck in terms of not losing the time. So it's kind of a, an interesting paradox. So. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, whenever going into a high level event, I always um, take, an, in fact, uh, uh, take, a, take a look at the, the format and kind of see what's going on with um, how long the games will be dragged on because the mental the mental game is the real war you know you got to make sure you get sleep that day uh the night before everyone's comes into town depending on when, when you get in if you're able to get some good testing in but mm -hmm. sleep is key making sure you, you got water and making sure you you snack on some food throughout the day because there's no lunch breaks um but um yeah i, I understand what you mean with that uh, with that monarch talk um it definitely is right now i would say with dom uh with domain or without domain the most popular deck i would say yeah not taking anything away from Cosmos or PK Fire, any of we're, that. And we're joined by Tyler Jedlicka as well in, here in the booth, and we saw him showcase Clifford of Demise yesterday. And we had talked on the stream yesterday just about how that that could be very viable in a national setting because um, while it, it still has some skillful interactions, it's a deck that is um, very straightforward in terms of your game plan and execution, and you don't necessarily have to um, engage your opponent with these sort of complex game states that could come out. And so from a Nationals perspective, you're first off, you're playing the deck that nobody wants to face, uh, which is advantage to you. You're also playing a deck that is extremely consistent a lot of the time. Um, and it also, my other input would be that it's very straightforward what people are going to try to do against you. And so you have cards like Huge Revolution that are very straightforward and, and counteracting what your opponent would, would try to accomplish against you. And so that is a deck that I could see moving forward in a national setting where it's just very straightforward. However, the counter is, of course, the life points. You're paying so many life points, and, and time can really uh, come in 
uh, huge there. So do you, what do you think about a deck like a Demise deck, I guess? Whether it's Cosmo or Clifford, where they have this kind of dichotomy of it's very straightforward, but at the same time you pay so much life points. In a national setting, time's definitely a factor. Um, yeah, no, definitely. Um, t time is always a factor, like you said. You know, going into an event like uh, Columbus next week, uh, future YCSs, um, nationals, uh, those tier two level events. Um, you know, uh, time is one of the main factors. You you could go five, six, zero, oh, seven, zero. Oh. I mean, I've done that a couple mm -hmm. of times, but uh, just fall off uh, the they're in game one. They're, they're still in game one. Still, still game one, Blair. Zach's looks like he has control. Um, yeah, I believe it. it should be over here shortly. Yeah, it looks like Zach's going to be able to finish him off right here, I believe. Unless he's going to be able to run with the traps in the grave. But um, time is definitely a big factor, especially now in the meta. Some of the times games can end really quickly. Um, you know, uh, some hands can brick a little bit, but at the same time, some games can be dragged out. And going, go, you, you, you can go into a tournament, like I said, go 5, 6, 7, 0, oh, but mm. you still have three or four rounds that you need to finish off. And so you, you got to stay mentally aware and uh, awake and make sure that um, you're keeping track of the clock making sure your opponent isn't taking advantage of it but also making sure that um, you know that the gameplay is progressing so well if you're just joining us thank you Johnny I'm joined by Johnny Nagel TPO Pro Tyler Poe here joining you live from ARG St. Louis giving you top four coverage Eden Salen's PK fire deck against Zachary Leverett's Cosmo Demise a question at the top of the hour that uh, sparked a lot of controversy and also just some insight from the chat was we talked about the Mount Rushmore of Yu-Gi-Oh and, and who's on it for you so who would your top four players in the history of the game be on that kind of Mount Rushmore? You can take a minute to think about it if you want. Okay, yeah, definitely. Yeah, let me go ahead and just yeah. ponder on that a little bit. In the bit. meantime, we're scooping it up here, I believe, or? Yep, I, I believe yeah. so. Yep, Zach, Zach's going to take so game Zach's one, all right? taking game one. There you go, Zach. So, uh, your boy. Yep. Up one to nothing here in a crucial top four matchup. Both players vying for the title of ARG St. Louis champion and everything that goes along with it. He just picked up his deck foreign last a uh, couple weeks ago, and he was saying how he wanted to, uh, to do well with it because he just got it all foreign. So, what, what do you think contributes to the the foreign uh, kind of the allure of that? A lot of players seem to, to kind of go that direction. Is there something about it? Is you know, it, is I think it just it's just um, something. What is it about? You know, it's just more of a prestige thing. Uh, I would say, yeah, uh, players that have been in the game uh, longer, vet, veteran vets, uh, uh, just kind of like the difference. I would say when, once you kind of know the face of the card we all know you know how the the game mechanic or how the the card plays so it just di it's just different sometimes some of those other artworks are a little darker um, and they look a little better on some cards i would say uh, the image is a little different uh, i think it's just difference it's just just like in life you know different cells unique is unique cells so i think it just targets a certain groups or 